Hi, uh, we're group 25 and today we'll be talking to you about nickel-based super alloys. These materials are commonly found in the exhaust section of gas turbine engines. Uh, and the way a gas turbine engine operates is air is intake and uh, gradually compressed through these compressor blades here. And then in the combustor, fuel is added and temperatures and pressures peak. The first material that these high temperature and pressure gases encounter uh, are nickel-based superalloys. Gas turbine efficiency is largely dictated by how hot they can operate, and current uh, turbine inlet temperatures exceed 1500 degrees Celsius. Um, this is well above the useful range of conventional metals uh, because uh, typical metals such as titanium, steel, and aluminum uh, suffer from the from degradation of strength when environmental temperatures exceed 40% of their melting points. This phenomenon is known as creep. So to mitigate this, two technologies are used. Uh, blade cooling, which you can see through the perforations in this turbine blade, uh, control gas flow, which help lower the bulk material temperature, as well as uh, high performance materials, such as nickel-based superalloys. Nickel-based superalloys have been developed to provide high creep resistance at temperatures exceeding 80% of their melting point while under severe centripetal load. Now, if you've never heard of creep, that's okay. The best way to imagine it is that it's a form of ductile deformation at elevated temperatures and eventually results in material failure. Creep generally occurs by the movement of dislocations that distort or deform the grain boundary. Now, when considering nickel alloys, it is important to remember that it's the internal structure of the alloy that gives it its mechanical properties. More specifically, as the superalloy solidifies, its grains grow with an overall dendritic structure, as shown in this figure to the left. Now in this figure, it's composed of two general phases, two main phases. The lighter pathways make up the gamma phase, and the darker blocky shapes make up the gamma prime phase. Now the gamma prime phase is essentially a secondary phase that precipitates out and sits cohesively next to the primary phase. In the figures to the right, they both show the gamma and gamma prime unit cells. Both are face-centered cubic structures with the gamma comprised of either aluminum or nickel uh, atoms and the gamma prime comprised of nickel face sites and aluminum corner sites. Now in conventional metals, creep occurs when the dislocations form in the atomic structure within the grain boundaries. These occur along lattice planes of the metal. However, in nickel superalloys, when a dislocation transfers from the gamma to the gamma prime phase, it does not align with the lattice plane and it takes the occurrence of two dislocations, or a super dislocation as it's termed, to create slip motion or creep. It's because of this resistance to dislocation movement and the need for a super dislocation that the super alloy has greater mechanical strength and creep resistance. Additionally, fatigue and corrosion resistance are important properties that need to be considered. Fatigue is defined as the structural damage that occurs when a material is subjected to cyclical loading. To increase fatigue resistance, adding boron and phosphorus into the bulk material reduces fatigue deformation by reducing the diffusion and stabilizing the oxide layer. For corrosion, a process known as selective oxidation is used in nickel-based superalloys. Elements like aluminum and chromium are used to form an oxide phase that serves as a barrier to prevent further oxidation. The general trend in the gas turbine design is driven by increasing efficiency through hotter combustion temperatures, requiring materials to maintain mechanical properties in more hostile environments. Therefore, nickel-based superalloys have been the best solution to solve these issues.